<laughs> no, you're wrong. So, Jagen. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Should we expect human-like intelligence elsewhere in the universe? So I, th I have two views about it. The first one is that, you know, if you replay the tape, creating something human-like a second time, even on Earth, is probably pretty unlikely. But it's only a gut feeling. It's almost, you know, it's impossible to simulate this or actually know much better. On the other hand, we humans are just about to build human-like intelligence based on silicon, silicon chips, um, robots, computers, which will probably exceed us in intelligence, will easily buy, build radio telescopes. And so I'm pretty sure you can build human-like or radio telescope building intelligence well, from not, building blocks that are not even organic. Right, right. That's not, so the que that, that's not the question. The question is on another planet... Whether evolution can drive the existence of such things. Uh, we don't know. We don't. Uh, given, given an infinite number of rocky planets, probably somewhere, the probability that it's close to us and we make contact with them, that's more dubious. Okay, so you know the Planet of the Apes movies, I guess. Yeah. All right, you've seen them. Yeah, there's also this tree that looks like a Planet of the Apes tree. Okay, so in that movie, humans kind of marginalize themselves and then they start living in gutters like rats and then the, the other great apes, the chimps, the orangutans and the gorillas, yeah. evolve into, they occupy the intelligence niche. And yeah. then they start speaking English and then riding horses and planting corn and essentially acting like humans. They're kind of hairy. Yeah. So, what do you think of that movie? Is that anything that is... A... Well, if any, if, if any other animal apart from us on the planet will evolve human-like intelligence, then probably the bonobo or the chimpanzee, because it's genetically extremely close to us. Okay, but, let me uh, stop you my there. My gut feeling, it's just gut feeling again, I would think it's still pretty unlikely. It's a gut feeling pretty unlikely? That's not very helpful, pretty unlikely, because yep. pretty unlikely could be you know, 10% to been, one oh, part oh, in a trillion, oh, trillion, trillion, yes, trillion, yes, no, yes. trillion, 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 trillion. I don't think that my estimate is better than that. A lot of biologists, I think probably most people in the world think that life on Earth has been getting more complex or complicated. I think they use the word complex. Now, do you think that's the case? Over the four billion years of evolution on life, do you think... Again, it depends on the definition of complex and complicated. They're two different things. Um, in my field of research, the word complex means created from modules. Life is modular. Um, for example, eukaryotic cell is constructed from organelles, which originate partly from endosymbiotic bacteria. That makes the eukaryotic cell complex because it is a complex of the, the host cell, uh, mitochondrion, the endoplasmatic reticulum, a chloroplast, the nucleus. Um, that cell is definitely complex in that definition. In the next step, you have multicellularity and complex multicellularity. That means you can construct uh, a larger organism based on different cells that have different functions. That's definitely complex in that definition. There's no question about it. And if you define complexity in this way, yes, there's no doubt that complexity increased over time. I don't know what complex but means. I just hear it a lot. infinitely complex, right? If that's the definition, it's hard to understand by humans. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what this word means, but I hear it so often, and people say it with such conviction yeah. that, and that's usually the type of thing that I say that can't be right. <laughs> right. See, look look at life on this planet. You can take a subset out of it. Uh, interaction between different creatures. Um, the complexity in the sense of how to comprehend, how to describe, how to predict, how to to simulate. If that's what complex is, it depends entirely on what subset of life on the planet you're actually looking at. But there's a, also this Gaian theory about, you know, the whole biosphere being alive. And, and do you think that there can be global adaptations that have evolved on sub-global levels? Oh, right. So there's definitely you can choose for your models units of selection that will give you crazy and wrong predictions. So the Gaia, the Gaia idea that, the, that life on Earth evolves in a, in a way to stabilize the planet and make sure that all life is happy and the temperature doesn't go up too high or too low, uh, that's a crazy concept. I think it's the, the wrong choice of unit of selection for what they want to model. So, so we can make so mistakes you, in the choice so of selection, <laughs> that's, that's for sure. Okay, so sure. you think that the biosphere does not have any adaptive features to it that have worked to, I don't know, maintain temperature or maintain water at the surface? I think that 
maybe it has, but if you want to model it by by maximizing these outcomes, you make a mistake. I don't think that evolution on our planet works like that. Well, let's well, I'm not talking about evolution on our planet. I'm talking about evolution everywhere. So let's talk Probably everywhere. So let's talk about a, let's say there are 100 planets. No, let's make it 1000 planets. 100,000 planets. And they all have life on them. And then ping ping they go extinct. Ping 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 they go extinct and then there are 10 left. And then and then a billion years later, ping 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 you get extinct and then there are two left. And then ping. now none of these planets have communicated with each other. Yes. But this one that's left out of 100,000 is the only one, and it has these adaptive features by chance that have allowed it to persist. Yes. Now, is that evolution? It's not evolution, it's selection without evolution, because the information of that selection is not transmitted into the next generation that's spreading. Well, it's called so persistence. If this, it's if a, this one planet yeah. that survived, yeah. then it's able to spread that type of evolution, that type of Why does life. Why need to spread? Why can't it just planets? persist? This because is what Ford do not, little. Because it would then not be evolution. For evolution, you need to, to transmit that information into a next generation and have the possibility to to multiply it, or at least to propagate it into a next generation. Why wait because minute, wait. that will go extinct at some point as well. There's nothing left, right? So well, there is no. Well, up until now, it's the only one alive, and you're saying it's not the result of evolution. It's the result of selection. It's the result, not the result of selection, of but not yeah. evolution. So, yeah. so you're telling me that you can't have immortal, you have to have a next generation? Persistence is not equivalent to a next generation? Uh, if you have immortality that where the creatures that are immortal don't evolve, then you don't have evolution. By wait, 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 wait. This, on this planet, yeah. life has evolved and changed. Yes. And it's done this and this and this yes. and this and this, but it hasn't competed with no, these other course, planets. Charlie. On, on that planet, you have evolution amongst the creatures on that planet, but you yeah. don't. You have selection amongst those planets, but you don't have evolution at that <laughs> unit of. So this is important. Where, where you at? What sort of unit of selection you're talking about? If you talk about the entire planet as a unit of selection, you don't have evolution based on that unit of selection. In this well, example, right? you know Ford Doolittle. You only need this you know planet Ford Doolittle? to. Do, yes, I know Ford Doolittle. Okay, now he talks about this as evolution. He talks about it as persistence, as a type of evolution, and he wants to. I think he wants to call it Darwinian evolution. Yeah. So he disagrees with you. Want to you want to exclude persistence as a way uh, the, of evolution? Okay, you, but he's talking about the persistence uh, in the competition of different units. No, no, he's talking about a planet, a whole planet, not no competition yeah, at no, all. I no, find strange. I don't know if it's a useful concept. What's it good for? There's no no part of Darwinian evolution that you need competition, is it? I would think so. You do need competition, sure. You do need competition? You need to fight? Well, it's a good question. Um, yes, you do need competition. I would think so. Yes, yes, yes. The, you need, if you have selection, then that would be by definition competition. No, Only no, not if, if you have two planets. <laughs> if, if they're two different planets, you're not having much competition no, 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 going on right, there. No, 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 it's right, it's also not evolution. If, not evolution, if however, no. Uh, life on some planet dies, but it survives on one planet because the life there from the beginning had different features that could adapt to changing planets. And then that life spreads to those planets where it went extinct. Then you have evolution. So, then you have evolution. So let's suppose there are 100,000 planets, all of the life dies except on one, and that life then changes and changes and changes, but it's not evolving according to you. But then as soon as it sends a probe out to another planet, then it has evolved? Absolutely. <laughs> Yes. No, 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 no. You, Charlie, you're mixing up units of selection. Of course, of course I am. I'm purposely evolved, mixing them up because if you I think choose, <laughs> if you choose in, 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 your, in your thoughts the entire planet as the unit of selection, yeah. right? At that level, if you think about evolution, at that level, yeah. the life on that planet, the type of life on that planet has to spread. Otherwise, you just have selection spread? without evolution. Absolutely. <laughs> Why can't it just sit there and be happy? Because it would not be. It would not fulfill any idea about what evolution wow, is. Wow, you're like a If you would transfer economist. that idea to evolution of life on the planet, on you know, just around us here, you would create all sorts of things that you would call evolution, which are not. You know the Fermi paradox? The Fermi paradox Remind is... Remind me. The Fermi paradox is, here's the galaxy, and it's 100,000 light years from here to here, billion, hundreds, 200 billion stars, probably lots and lots and lots and lots of Earth-like wet, rocky planets. 
And the idea is, if you think that those wet rocky planets will have life, and that life will evolve intelligence, and that intelligence will have radio telescopes, and then you'll start colonizing space, then you ask the question, well, where is everybody? Why haven't we already been colonized? And yep. that's the Fermi's paradox, after yep. Enrico Fermi. And so this seems to be a data that's important for people who are interested in life elsewhere. And the datum is we don't the great silence. Why is there? Why haven't yeah. we even colonized? And so, do you have any favorite solutions to this paradox? Yes, I think even if life evolved on all rocky planets within the Goldilocks zone, there is a lot of steps to building spaceships to that carry you over you know, solar distances. And any of these steps might be very, very unlikely. Steps. You got you a know, stairway? Evolving, evolving a cell, a low, evolving a complex cell, evolving complex multicellularity. Uh, so, so being yeah. on a planet that doesn't dry out, cook up or freeze mm -hmm. over. Um, and then, as you say, the unlikelihood of evolving, you know, intelligent life, that on top of that, evolves interest for technology, you know, why, why would you do that? Yeah, that could be a huge fluke that we do that. And then having an interest actually to, to, to find out what else is there. You know, the evolution of curiosity. Uh, you know, maybe intelligent life even evolves easily, but maybe other intelligent life will not evolve curiosity. Maybe they don't care what's out there. Maybe they just don't give so, a shit. Okay, so you're using this word intelligence as if it means something. Now, do you think it means something? Yeah, I guess it means nothing means something. <laughs> <laughs> That's the answer you wanted, Charlie. I don't know. So I'm using words and I feel guilty most of the time because I'm not sure what they mean. And so that's why you think I'm always making up these things. But I don't think I'm making them up. I'm just confused about what words mean. And I think my confusion is helpful. <laughs> Unlike most people. Yeah, right. If you, if you define this intelligence as radio telescope building intelligence, then you need to exclude the chimpanzee. And 99.99999% of humanity. Because you I, don't know how to build a radio telescope. Yeah, well. I would be totally. <laughs> I know. You know this beautiful Gary Larson cartoon about this rocket scientist who built this crooked thing with this twisted nose yeah. and said, uh, "You know what? We are not rocket scientists." No, I think there's a cows <laughs> that are doing this. No, it's actually scientists. We're not rocket scientists, but could, it could be cows. I think they're cows. You no, know, I'm not much better than a cow in building a radio telescope. Right. I yeah. fear. Yes. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Okay. No, there's no single human who can build a radio telescope. It's humanity who builds these things. Yes, yes, I guess. And that's, by the way, another very, very, very important feature. You could imagine highly intelligent creatures who evolve from predators. If, if intelligent creatures would evolve from something like a lion or a tiger, uh, they're loners. They are not, oh, not so like wait, dogs wait, or wait, chimpanzees. Wait. Tigers, yes, but lions, they hunt together a lot right. of times. There's very good science fictions where um, you know, vampire-like, human-like creatures are highly intelligent, way more intelligent than humans, but they cannot achieve what humans they do because they're cooperate. loners, they do not work together. I think that's a very important component of our type of radio telescope building intelligence that we cooperate. Because no humans ha human has the knowledge to build such a thing. Let's, let's, let's switch gears and talk about English then. We're speaking English. That's very, very quirky, right? Yes, yes. You don't expect quirky. anywhere, you yes. don't expect but English anywhere else, do you? You don't expect any English anywhere no, else, right? No, no, absolutely right, so not. But English, having... no. Yes. African elephants, no. Yes. But radio telescopes, yes. Yes, absolutely. And for me, they're in the same category. No, they're not in the same category, Charlie. Why not? At all. It's all one species. Because, because there is, to, to have exactly the, the English language, you have only one extreme, infinitely unlikely trajectory from the origin of life to today. Well, I'm saying building but a radio is telescope is infinitely unlikely. That's no, what I'm saying. No, it's not. Why not? Building exactly this radio telescope that we've built right there over on that hill, that's infinitely unlikely. But building any structure that can communicate between planets has an infinite number of trajectories to evolve. I am an English. You could change this verb over here and this really and I could say instead of logic, I could say logic and I could have different, infinite number of, of different uh, dialects and there's an yes, infinite so, so it's, it's an infinite space it's magpie walking past here yes. it has evolved yodeling for, uh, it's wonderful you know, wonderful <laughs> yeah it has evolved doesn't understand me but it has evolved a totally different type not totally independent type of communication and so there's an infinite number of different types of languages you can create and the probability to create something of a set of infinity is pretty high again yeah. you think that Human life, human like intelligence in the definition of being able to build something to communicate between star systems does not exist elsewhere in the universe. 
I th yeah, I think that's right. That's right. Why do you think that, Charlie? Because the data we have to evaluate that is here on Earth. And here on Earth, it's, there's only one species that does that or could Charlie. do that. And therefore, it's a species-specific characteristic. And if I'm to say, hey, I don't expect a sulfur-crested cockatoo on another planet. I don't expect an African elephant. I don't expect this eucalyptus tree. And if I'm going to say that, I don't expect a human being. And if human beings are the only ones on Earth that do this, then it's a species-specific right. characteristic. Charlie, and there's... I, I turn this argument around. I see it differently. Yeah. We have a data set of one planet where life has evolved hmm. in the moment. On this one planet, we have created intelligence that can send information out wait, into wait, wait, we space. Haven't created, we haven't created it. That life, oh. as we, oh, has created, has evolved intelligence that can send communication out into space that can be read mm -hmm. by life that was on other planets. So we have one data point and we can tick it. Yes, positive. That type of intelligence has evolved. So probability of it evolving, if the life has evolved, is probably pretty high. What's wrong with that reasoning? The reasoning is that I, can I replace building a radio telescope with speaking in Indo-European language. That's what's wrong with it. It's crazy. It, That's I know. totally silly. <laughs> it's not silly. Intelligent life has not evolved yet on this planet, unfortunately. <laughs>